One of the fundamental problems with individuals today when they want to be productive as knowledge workers is this problem of information bombardment. And information bombardment basically deals with how we get thrown all this information at us and most of it's just not useful. I mean if you think of an average individual who might receive a hundred emails in a day, uh, you know maybe 10 or 15 of those emails are actually of use. 85 of them are you know the guy from Nigeria and people selling you Viagra. So we waste a lot of time going through those types of emails and the information bombardment problem is going to get worse before it gets better. Um, all we have to do is look at how much information gets accumulated uh, in the world today. And if you look at an email, for example, that process of codification we've been doing as human beings for thousands and thousands of years. If you go way, way back to uh, cave people, they would draw on the caves. And that's how they would communicate with one another. And then the Egyptians would write on papyrus paper. And the Greeks would write on ancient tablets. And the Romans on, you know, scrolls. And then we had the development of the printing press in medieval times. And now we've got computers. So we've been codifying with a bunch of different media for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, by the 1930s, a team of library scientists calculated that the cumulative codified information base of the world, which in simple English means all the stuff we've been writing down since we started writing down stuff, would double every 30 years, which is a fantastic statistic because that means in one generation all the world's knowledge doubles, which is quite remarkable because 30 years is like one generation. You know, parents and kids all work from different fields of knowledge, and that's why sometimes they don't understand each other. It's this generational gap. By the 1970s, that number shrank again so that the cumulative codified information base of the world would double every seven years, which is quite remarkable and a challenge for the educational system. Because if children start school in grade one, by the time they get to grade eight, there's a whole new body of knowledge in the world. So how are they supposed to keep up? How does the educational system keep up? 500 years ago, if you wanted to get a bachelor's degree, you would go to the Sorbonne in Paris, France, and it would take you four years to get a bachelor's degree. Today, you want to get a bachelor's degree, go to Ryerson, it takes you four years to get a bachelor's degree. Where's the innovation in 500 years? And of course, this number keeps on shrinking and shrinking and shrinking so that in the next few years, the cumulative codified information base of the world will double every 11 hours. And that's an astronomical statistic because it means with the genome sequence and with the internet and with Google digitizing every document on the planet, it's going to be very, very difficult for people to keep up at that accelerated rate. And you think about the impact on your personal life. The joke that I always use is you'll go to sleep late on a Saturday night, sleep in on a Sunday morning, you'll be half as stupid as you were the night before. Eleven hours will have passed you by. So the question really boils down to this. How can we maintain productivity as knowledge workers, knowing that the world's going to be bombarding us with information, much of which will be useless to us, and knowing that the only scarce resource left today is your attention span. How do you choose to use the next 24 hours.